Blizzard has taken the gaming world by storm with World of Warcraft, and this is the year to be a WoW fan. We've got the anticipated blockbuster Warcraft movie coming out, the new Legion expansion, and of course, BlizzCon, dedicated to all things Blizzard. And one of the many reasons fans love this series is for the beautifully crafted cinematic trailers that Blizzard puts out before each new expansion or super mega patch. Rife with backstory, hints of what's to come, and simply stunning visuals, it's no wonder they finally built a film around this world. I'm Meredith Placco with Cinematica, and today we're counting down to the top 10 World of Warcraft cinematic trailers from the game. For the Horde! We're going to go all the way back to the beginning with World of Warcraft, the cinematic that started it all. This is the very first thing you see when you load up WoW for the first time. For devoted fans of the original Warcraft series to diehard fans of the MMO, this still counts among their top trailers. It's what launched the game that has sold over 14 million copies, not even including the expansions. And it's a beautiful cinematic that still holds up all these years later. It introduces us to the new playable races in the game, the Dwarves and the Tauren, the Night Elves and the Undead, and of course, there are turning favorites, the orcs and humans, and for anyone craving a high fantasy game, especially back in 2004, to see such beings brought to life, man, it's no wonder this game took off like it did. And the reason it stayed strong all these years later is in no small part to Blizzard, who is constantly putting out new dungeons, quests, and expansions to keep their legion of loyal fans satiated. One of those quests was the Shadow of Necropolis, the return of Kel'th Azad, which is the second trailer we're going to talk about. One of the big patches released in the original World of Warcraft game was this 40-player raid on Nexramis. This patch, 1.11, was introduced with a trailer foretelling the return of another blast from Warcraft's past, the human mage turned lich, Kel'Thuzad. This trailer gives a great breakdown of Kel'Thuzad's past and how he got wrapped up with the dreaded Lich King to begin with, and it really kind of makes you feel conflicted about the whole having to go battle with this guy. It's not that these trailers are just glorious ways to show off Blizzard CG skills. You really do get a sense of what they're trying to craft in this world, especially for you players who like to click past all those well-written dialogue options just to get back to your questing. The third cinematic we're going to talk about is the Burning Crusade. Burning Crusade was the first expansion to come to World of Warcraft, and with it, it brought new races, a new world to explore, and a whole slew of adventures to go on. It also laid the groundwork for events that would happen years later when Legion would be released. We see the introduction of the Blood Elves to the Horde. Their true name, the Sindori, are just some former High Elves who are seeking vengeance for some terrible things that happened to them during the Third War. The Lich King and his forces eradicated 90% of their population and their source of power. This other group that shows up are the Draenei. No one knew what to make of them, but eventually they were accepted into the Alliance, mainly based on some trumped up charges the good guys had against the Blood Elves and their activities in Outland, but their allegiance to the Alliance has proven useful, even if the Draenei hold a dark secret back in their homeworld. That brings us to scene number four, the Black Temple. So part of the reason the Draenei are displaced is because one of their own sort of kind of betrayed them. I mean, he's no betrayer, but through Akama's musings of his past, we do learn what happened back on Outland and how Illidan the Betrayer came to take it over. And this is a great trailer because you really aren't introduced to much of this story in Burning Crusade as of yet. The setup is really solid and it's a backstory that is the core of Burning Crusade for me anyways. The Burning Legion is a pressing threat for sure, but these displaced people from the Outlands and all of the forces battling in and out, it all ties together. And you start to have these ideas of these big players, not just the leaders of your factions, but the big bads like the Lich King, Gul'dan, the Scourge, Illidan, and so forth. Who are they? How the hell are they all connected? And the Black Temple starts to lay that out for you. We know that Akama teams up with Illidan because he is the enemy of my enemy, but even he knows that this is just trading one evil for another. So just how far will Akama go to ultimately win his home and his people back to his side? Trailer number five, Wrath of the Lich King. Time for expansion number two and one of my favorite cinematics, Wrath of the Lich King finally brings not only the Ice King himself into play, but we are treated to the tale of Prince Arthas. The Crown Prince of Lordarion, a true hero who falls so far from grace, there is no salvation for him. Also, we get a giant skeletal death dragon. The voiceover is courtesy of King Menethil, giving this rousing father-to-son speech about how honor and strength and power and true victory lies in stirring the hearts of the people, all while the former prince flies over his army of death knights. It's chilling. But the truest victory, my son, is stirring the hearts of your people. And awe-inspiring. And it's even more screwed up when you know that Prince Arthas goes on to kill his own father. He doesn't start out as the Lich King, no. Prince Arthas was a hero to the Alliance, a paladin, Knight of the Silver Hand. During the battle with the Scourge, this proud knight was foolhardy and sought out a weapon to defeat his horde of enemies. What he found was more than he bargained for. 
Frostmorton did bring death to hundreds, but to his former allies and friends. Upon touching the Cursed Blade, Arthas became a lich in the service of the original Lich King, the former orc shaman Nerzul. Not content to just be a player in this party, though, Arthas took on Nerzul, but they merged into one tremendous evil being. And now Arthas, fully realized as the Lich King himself, descends upon Azeroth with his army of Death Knights. Blizzard did such a fantastic job with this trailer and really upping the stakes for the Lich King expansion in general. In any other game, he would have just been another guard dog you offhandedly defeat in order to get to the big bad behind the Burning Legion. But the Lich King is a formidable force all on its own, which takes us directly into trailer number six, the fall of the Lich King. All that pain Arthas put the world through as the Lich King, he was still greeted by his father in death. At long last. No king rules forever, my son. I see. I guess his excuse was, the blade made him do it. So you defeat Arthas as Lich King, but his dear departed dad drops this big bomb on you. There must always be a Lich King. Of course, you, the player, can't be it. How else did you finish all those side quests? The final scene wraps up with Tyrion Fordring. You think he's going to take the crown, forever entombing himself in ice and a life of service to battling the Scourge within and keeping the Death Knights at bay, all in the name of self-sacrificing good guyness. But in steps Bolvar Fordragon, the former undead paladin. After being nearly driven insane and tortured by the Lich King, Bolvar has this great idea. Hey, why don't you not sacrifice your life, Tyrion, and let me, the guy who's already kind of undead, handle things here? And as the new Lich King, Bolvar sinks into the frozen throne and asks that the world be told of his heroic defeat and spread the word that the Lich King is dead. Pain. Agony. My hatred burns through the cavernous deeps. Okay, trailer number seven, Cataclysm. Since that crazy skeleton death dragon went over so well in the last expansion, Blizzard decided to capitalize on it and bring a whole expansion based on a giant fire-breathing dragon. Meet Deathwing the Destroyer. This fearsome beast bursts through from the elemental plane at the center of the world, plunging all into chaos and forever altering Azeroth's geo and political landscape. Along with Deathwing, elementals have breached the surface and now fight for control of the land, while the Alliance and Horde continue their aggressions towards one another. While many see this as an expansion about killing a dragon, at its core it's really about the political struggles of Azeroth. This renewed violence between the Alliance and the Horde, as their land and resources come under attack, really show how unstable any treaty the two try to make is. But of course, if the factions want to save their world, they're gonna have to find a way to work together to defeat Deathwing and the invading forces. Also don't forget, the Burning Legion's still out there somewhere. And all will burn beneath the shadow of my wing. To ask why we fight is to ask why the leaves fall. Okay, trailer number eight goes to a fan favorite, Mists of Pandaria. Panda people. Seriously. Blizzard decided to make what was originally an April Fool's Day joke into an entire new expansion because the fans wanted it so badly. These martial arts-based pandas in this expansion went over bonkers with the fans, especially in the global market. The cinematic for the expansion, though, gives you a really great glimpse of this kung fu panda in the flesh. It also hints at something big and new with these Pandarians. They're factionless. You see, the Pandarian in the trailer takes on both the orc and the human. And throughout the expansion, you remain neutral until the end. And that's when you get to choose whether you align yourself with the Alliance or the Horde. Time for trailer number nine, Victory and Draenor from the Warlords of Draenor expansion. We will never be slaves! The defeat of Gul'dan is a long time coming for Warcraft fans. His return in Warlords of Draenor harkened back to some of the first Warcraft games to date. It had fans and NPCs trembling for very different reasons. And after all the questing, grinding, and material collecting you can handle, it's time to finally face the big bad and his minions head on in Draenor. To get to Gul'dan, you must first cut down the most vile and ruthless of the Eridor. Another blast from Warcraft's past, the Defiler seems to have his own agenda, which makes him one of the most dangerous NPCs you have yet to take up arms against. But when the dust settles and your party stands on the steps of the Hellfire Citadel, ready to finally take on the Lord of the Shadow Council, betrayer of the Orcs, leader of the Iron Horde himself, 
Archimon steals your thunder and thrusts Gul'dan into the dark portal. After one of the most heart-pounding battles in the game, fighting this giant demon who does nothing but stomps on you and your crew, you can barely catch your breath as you gather the mental strength for this next big fight and BAM! Gul'dan is gone! What the heck was all this for? Why did you spend the entire time trying to take down this one guy who has the ability to tear Azeroth asunder? And what the hell are you going to do next? Alright, maybe it doesn't qualify as one of the best cutscenes, but it's definitely one of the most frustrating ones. It left many players wondering WTF. It was worth it though, because just under a year later, Blizzard debuted a cinematic for a number 10 trailer, Legion. A terrible darkness has returned to our world. It seeks to annihilate everything that we hold dear. The <laughs> fury has only just begun. A dark portal has opened over Azeroth, the Burning Legion is invading in full force, and Illidan is back. In many ways, Legion is a coming home for Warcraft 2 and 3 fans, and a way to get to know these OG bad guys in an all new way for fans who have been with the series since 2004. This is definitely one of the most anticipated expansions in the franchise for longtime fans, and with the addition of the new Demon Hunter class, the Broken Isles, it's giving players a lot to look forward to. This will also be a great tie-in for the Warcraft film, where you're going to start to get some of that name recognition from characters you see on the big screen, and you'll get to hear about and even face off against in the new game. Without doing a hard reboot in the series, Blizzard has found an amazing way to come full circle, bringing their favorite lore and stories back to their time-honored players while giving new fans something to grab onto when starting out. It's almost like they've been planning to have this all tie in together this year. Peace is the noblest aspiration, but to preserve it, you must be willing to fight. Thanks for watching the top 10 World of Warcraft cinematic trailers. Which WoW one is your favorite? Are you for the Horde or the Alliance? Sound off in the comments. And if you like this video, be sure to check out some of our other videos by clicking the annotations or links in the description. We have new videos dropping every week, so let us know what you want us to cover next. And if you like getting more from your movies and TV shows, subscribe to Cinematica, where we help you watch smarter.